Switched it up. This is my side. <laughs> you know, we are like a married couple now, you know, the, the bed sizes. Here, let me. You know, like this is my can, side. This is your can, you, side. can we touch hands? Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us. Now, this is a pre recorded live. Um, we will be sharing this with you, um, I believe, on March 1st. Oh, oh. Let me turn off my phone. Yes, March 1st. So I'm trying to, we're trying to get a little head start. My kids will be on March break. So we don't want you to suffer without us. <laughs> so uh, today we are doing, what are you, are you doing? Is that Easter you were showing me before? I'm going to do some Easter because uh, by the time this airs, uh, Valentine's Day will be long gone. Yes. And I'm also doing Easter today. All right. So let's I'm jump in. Let's jump uh, in. In a, enough chit chat. <laughs> okay, let's do the camera lens there. All right. All right. So let's this is what we have here. here. Oh, nice. Yes, it's it's a puzzle cookie. So I'm just going to show you guys how to kind of look at your cutters to kind of finagle your own version without buying more cutters. Okay. So I'm just going to put these guys over here, and we're going to look at cutters. So. We have the head, the body, and the feet. You could do probably just a head and body if you wanted. And so here I've got three heads, and you can look through your bunny cutters. Oh, I see your pink bunny. I was curious where that shape came from. Where do you get where do you get that? I like this, that. This was actually at Cookie Con, they have a, a an exchange thing, you know, where people bring the cutters they don't want. Oh, okay. And oh, I think somebody didn't want cool. that, so you picked that out. I like the the way the cheek is. It's more like you know. Um, it's a very nice it's side. Really it's nice. Yes, it is. And so here are some versions. So once you've picked out the head, you kind of want to use. Then you want to look at the body. And so the body here. I have a candy corn. I have an egg oval. These are shapes that will kind of work. You want to. You know maybe have like a rounded belly so you want to look for something that's proportionate to the head that you have so here you see it's kind of like fits this one here eh, still good this one gives it a, di a bit of a different look but you could maybe have him wearing clothes maybe if he's got oh, you know what i see if you do that and maybe do a like a standing up basket like if you trim i don't know you know what i mean yes but it could be a girl and she's wearing a summer dress or something. Yes, that's true. Also dressed up uh, Easter bunny. And so for the feet, I find that ideally the feet is a heart. So you can see here So you can choose if you're just going to lean your cookies on top of each other or if you want to trim them. So you use the head to trim the body so that you get a good fit and use the body to trim the feet again to get a good fit so that when you puzzle them together they fit nicely together you can bake them so that they all stick together but i like them apart it just makes eating them a little bit easier so the last thing is arms so you want to have some arms so you can look uh the the letter c is a good shape also uh, letter what letter letter c is in charlie char okay and also um i've used a y trimmed off like part of the one of the like arms and it makes like a very nice angle to make arms okay. mm -hmm. so you just put on your creative hat there and and start thinking about it when you look through your cutters to see if you can piece something together and then in this case you can have them holding whatever i wanted him to hold a chocolate bunny so i have this tiny cutter of course and, you do of course you do yes. and so, how big is that thing that's like it's so cute <laughs> Just a little inspiration for you guys. You also get guys because I've seen that all kinds of um, molds, right? If you don't have the particular small bunny, you could. Um, oh, yeah. Sometimes they have little molds. There are bunny molds, and you could maybe. But he could it. hold. He could hold a carrot. He carrot. could hold. You could make carrot right. out of the marzipan. That's not going to. Yes. Uh, you could even yes. Yes. You yes. Could do so he could hold all kinds of cute things, right? And so here they are baked together. You can see, so trimmed off the top of the ov of the egg shape with the head. And then I use the paisley here to give mm -hmm. it the look of the arm resting. 
So I have just a gray icing. You can make your bunny any color you want. Today, this is a simplistic version because- Do you have bunnies around your house? I mean, I don't know now. It's very cold in Canada, I know, but do you, do you get them? We, we do have bunnies and there's a funny chain of events that happens here is we have a crab apple tree in the front yard. And so the squirrel goes all winter eating the crab apples. And obviously when he's picking them, he knocks some to the ground and that's for the bunny. So he helps the bunny. Oh, that's nice. Not even knowing. Yeah, I don't think he knows he's helping the bunny, but he's helping the bunny. All right, now the first one I'm doing is the belly because the arm is kind of like on top. And if you want, you can do spotted. You could do, you know, anything you want. I'm just Did you do this in two different colors? I think there is some shade, like I see this is like a grayish. Is this grayish? It is. Yes, okay, so I got, just my eyes are still functioning. Yes, it's just I used some of my kitchen sink black and a little bit of white, and I made this color. It's just um, some leftover icing to give you guys just some inspiration. Sometimes it's good to not give you guys all the details, just give you a little idea, and then you guys can run with it and make your own fun design. All right, so once this is, and you don't have to have the arm attached. You can have both arms separate if you wanted. And there we go. I have the body there. And once this is dry or crusted, I'll add the arm. And then you can add a little bow. You could do all kinds of things on the body if you wanted. Now for the feet. Here, I just want to show you the feet. Let me grab my, my marker. Now, this is the leg part. So I'm just marking it like that. And then the foot is coming around you see like that they're kind of dangly like a plush animal so once you've done this you can wait for it to dry and then you'll be able to come and add a second layer so that it's more dimensional so i'll just quickly show you this one here so you don't have to worry about the feet touching at the at the tip here you can have them what is, what's the consistency you're using do you know oh, it's probably 15 it's quite fluid I've been getting a lot of messages with regards to um, people having struggles with the consistency. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that maybe could help is that you put the water in really one drop at a time. Like if you're pouring it in with a cup or, you know, something that pours out a lot of water. Yeah, you, exactly. It's very difficult to control that. And, and it's very fast that you've crossed the line. It's a matter of fact. Here are the three three uh, tools I would recommend. I personally love the spray bottle. Show, you here, let's show, there you are. show them, Hen. That's it. The spray then, bottle. You can also, some people use decorating bottles, but it's really make sure that you have a small tip on there so you don't have like a number 12, which is a giant hole and you pour it That's in. Exactly, and yeah. then some people use a dropper also. Oh. Perfect. Yes, all so those are great. You, can, you have some control of how much water you add. You don't want to really add like a, a lot of water. Exactly. Exactly. So now that uh, this one here has had time to dry, so I'm just going to show you. So on this one, I'm just now you want to wait for them to uh, like crust separately so that the toes remain separate. So they're kind of like just touching at the end, gives it like a bit of a cuteness. I'm just going to add one foot once it's crusted, then I'll add the other foot. And you can see it gives it a slightly more, if we put them next to each other. Oh, it yeah. Gives it, it, makes a, it makes a difference. Yeah. You could even uh, dust, like, I don't know, probably not the feet, but, you know, if you wanted to add some texture. Oh, absolutely. And you could uh, yeah, shape it. Like if you want to paint a little bit, you know. Or paint, or you could do, you know, the the fuzzy things. Oh, I love this shape. This is such a nice shape for the bunny. You so know how is, affectionate I am towards bunny. Yes, uh, you love bunny. So I just continued the line here. You see, I follow the curve of the cutter, and then at the top of the head also, and then I'm just following the shape of the ear. So you continue the lines if you can from the cutter. You see here the curve, so that it just looks right. And then here is the inside of the ear is going to be pink. So now, for as a reminder, she is using an edible marker, guys. Okay, if you are new to cookie decorating or yes. any 
cake decorating and do you see people using markers? Most likely it's an edible marker filled with edible ink. So now I'm just with a small spatula and this is a paint. If you'll find this in the craft section for the just painting and I'm just basically buttering a little bit of paint on there so that it looks like the inside of the ear, a very faint pink. And you wanna let that dry, but as you saw, there's so such a small amount that you don't have to um, wait very long. But I'm going to do the ear that's right next to it over here, so it'll have time to, um, to cross. So you wanna pipe your sections separately so that you get a definition between each part, or else it just becomes one big mass and it doesn't like you can pipe an outline on top but it just looks gives it a different look if you wait between your sections it just makes like this you can see the arm you see if this if i hadn't waited this would just be like a big gray area wouldn't have that little definition so there's the first ear this one here has had time to dry so i can i can do this one i'm just adding that if you want you could add a little tuft of um of white icing with a star tip a thicker icing right here to give them a little a little personality i'm gonna just fill right here with that gray and then i'm gonna use pearls for the eyes you know i've never ever used pearls for the eyes never yeah. ever have i tried i think i have not and why is that? And I think maybe if I have, uh, if they if they bled, and then you have told me you have to use a different brand, and I never got the brand, and I never used black pearl. Well, I, you know, the thing about the black pearls is you don't have to mix up black icing. And yeah, that's true, yes. And they do kind of like give the character a bit of a, of a different look, you know, because the icing, when you put them in, it kind of gets rounded around. It kind of yes. creates a bubble. Yes. yes. I think I maybe put them a little bit too high. Here, I'm gonna just give them a little nudge down. So it looks weird now because he doesn't have his nose. <laughs> I'm just gonna shake that. So you can see, you're gonna let that crust. What else do we got here? Oh, yes. So this guy here, we can see. Oh, I can't get it. You know what? It, oh, I know what it reminds me of. You know the can. I've been meaning to do that candy thing with. This is the shape. You know the really sour. Oh, the sour candy. Yes, yes, yes. Sour yes. patch. No, is it called the specific sour patch? I think, I, I think it's that. Is it the specific one? It's like very long shape, like longer shape, and there are different colors. And it is the sour patch, I think. So here I'm just adding the arm, like it's holding a chocolate bunny. So the cho the gray is like resting on top and so if it's a franken cookie this will help solidify the two parts together if you're having trouble with your franken cookies breaking apart you can try adding a little bit of water to your raw dough when you're piecing them together a little bit like you would when you're making your pie to secure your pie crust to your you mean you mean to brush it on or like with spray like, no, to brush it in the steam, you know, like just to have a little paint brush. In. Mm -hmm. And so here you want to again let this crust so that when you add your little bunny, I don't have one ready to um, to switch out, but you see this little bunny. And I didn't really add much detail to him because... Oh, oh my goodness, now I'm seeing it. It reminds me of my niece. She, she loves this um, show for the kids and it's a um, groundhog. Oh yeah, like European. It reminds me of you. Like, it, yeah, it totally. I have to show a you. Groundhog, a groundhog has what kind of ears? I can't visualize it. Is it like a mouse? Yeah, a European. Is it a groundhog? Yes, it's like a, but it's like a cartoonish, you know, thing. I think it is. Yes, it is a groundhog. I have to show you because it totally reminds me of that. Just so you know what you can use it for. <laughs> So if you examine a bunny, they don't really have a fleshy nose. Like we look at other critters like a dog and a cat. They have like that fleshy nose. A bunny's nose is more kind of just like a sliver in fur. So if you examine it, you can't like, I mean, people obviously do add the little like kind of cutesy round nose. But if you want it to look like an actual bunny, they don't really have a, uh, a fleshy nose, like I say. 
All right, let's try to get this. What was my time at? I'm good. You are good. So now I'm adding. I don't have a lot of time here like that to let it dry, but it should be fine. You guys will get the idea. So there. And you want to let, when you're adding an, another section of icing like this, you want to let that base dry. I mean, a good a good hour just because the weight can crack the bottom icing and then you're ruining your project, which can be very frustrating. So just wait, be patient. I know some of you struggle with patience, but try, because then it's like you just ruined all the nice work you did. And now I'm adding that other arm. And like I said, you can have all kinds of stuff resting on his body. Both arms can be holding stuff. I'm running low on gray icing. Are you? Is this the is this the gray icing that did you use your gray food color or is it did you use black? I use my leftover kitchen sink. Okay. So this is another kitchen sink color. Yes. So here is that one that I did earlier. It's probably not crusted enough, but I'll just for the sake of finishing off the character so you can add this part in white i think it would work in white as well the little front mm -hmm. yeah I think, yeah it would all right let me move this guy so i'm gonna grab my black now and add some finishing touches so i have a tipless bag and i'm gonna cut a small small hole and so I'm just adding, whoops, you want it, to, my, my icing was curling, so you want it to touch the icing so that it anchors it and it'll stop it from doing that annoying curl. So there's the little. Oh, now this really makes it, it's all in those little details, huh? And if. You're so oh, this is a thicker icing, right? Now, ideally, you want that, that to be crusted, right? I can see yes. it's so shiny. Yes. Yes, you want it to be crusted, but there you go. You can do the whiskers in white. It'd probably be a little less harsh. I do find it a slightly um, harsh here on this guy. If you want, you could add little, little eyes, but you don't want to go too crazy with the details on this and then I'm trying to visualize here. So this, I'm piping literally upside down. Yeah, I can see that. I do find that it is difficult to do. So here you can see that little detail does kind of jazz it up a little bit. That, 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 and let's replicate those little toes or feet here uh, like that. Now this icing, it appears a bit thicker. It holds it cheap. Slightly, slightly thicker. I'm gonna run a stitch up the tummy and then he's got like a bit of a, you know, for his like belly being round. So let's put it together. So we've got the little feet like that, the head over here, my in frame here, and then you can rest the little, he's holding it like that. So you can see how you can create your little character with, Adorable. with cutters that you have. You can make, like you can switch up the head, make a teddy bear, make a, uh, a cat make whatever you want. I'm thinking like he could you he could even hold a like if you have a um, football player or soccer player like he could hold a soccer ball or any kind of sports ball obviously. And you can add as much or as little detail as you want, you know, and add if he you be, he could be wearing a, a jersey. Oh, yeah, you could be adding a jersey. Like I said here, a little tuft of, uh, 
of a stiff icing, a little bow tie. Bow tie, yes. It could, yes. How would you, I can see people asking maybe, how would you package it? Well, there's some nice um, boxes that are like rectangle, about an inch, an inch and a half uh, deep. So you'd measure kind of, you know, sketch it out on paper, how big your cutter that you're using kind of will create the character. Sketch it out, measure it, and then go on um, Amazon and you can type the measurements. Box, this by this by this, and you'll find it. And you'll probably want to add a bit of uh, that crinkle paper so that mm -hmm. it doesn't rock around. Mm -hmm. I've seen people individually wrap all the cookies and then assemble it in the box. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, but it's kind of... Well, it's because the boxes aren't airtight. Yeah, so that's true. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why people, I think, do that part of the... It's like an extra step, expense and time, yes, but that's, I think, why. And I've also seen people, because the cookie's in a bag, they use double-sided adhesive to kind of hold them in place. So they'll put oh, the Oh, so they do stay, yes. Okay, so that would be my, like, you getting a bag, like, oh, what am I getting? What's this? Yeah. Right. Oh, I see, so the double-sided double tape would work to keep it together. Like to a keep it bundle. in place in the box, yeah. So that's my project. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What do you guys think? Are you going to make a bunny? Or another critter? Let us know. If you can let us know, I'm sure we would love to see that. So now, um, it's my turn. It's always nice to just watch. Yes. <laughs> it really is. Okay, so let me, let me turn this on. Oops. Okay. So much light. All right, so today I'm going to be working on... Um, I'm going to be working on Easter cookies, guys. Now... I don't know. I think this is a built-on set. It's a set of three, I think. I don't know where my third uh, egg is. But um, I'm also working on another project that's a piñata. So I decided to use the same shape. This is about... Oops, this is in centimeters. Oh, I don't have inches. <laughs> I'll say the centimeters. I don't have inches here. So this is oh, about, about 10 centimeters. So what is that? 10 so it's two inches, inches uh, or two five inches centimeters. Something. So it's a good size. It's not too small, nor it's overly large. So that's the cutter I use. I also like these coated cutters because they don't rust. Yes, they're great. So these are I think it's, um, it's a different, so you have to think about where you're serving the cookies. If you're making these cookies as gifts, the bigger is better. It's more kind of gift size. If you're serving them at a party and you want that on your table, you probably want to go with the smaller ones so that there's not waste, right? Yes. So I'm going to start, I'm going to be doing some wet on wet. You guys seem to like that and um, it's going to bring us back to the beginnings. Um, where we're just gonna use some one consistency. Well, maybe I will add some details. But Are there any beginners watching us today? Let us know in the yeah. comments if you're new to this cookie business. Yes, this is pretty, pretty beginner stuff. So you want to, well. Show us the colors you're using, Han. So I'm, I'm gonna be using um, blue and yellow and um, also some white. So these are just two colors basically to, that you need. This is royal blue and this is lemon yellow. Let me just adjust it. Too bright. Well, that yellow is like a, a street uh, a street yeah. corner or whatever, like a you know a hazard thing. So this is a lemon yellow and this is royal blue. Okay. Now I just what I did I colored my icing with uh, dark royal blue and I got it out of the bag, uh, got it out of the bowl and then I added some white and I just um, mixed it and whatever residue from the dark blue colored my white with really nice shade of blue. Okay, so I'm gonna start. Let's see. If you struggle, if you struggle making um, a nice color palette for your projects, using just different shades of the same color can be an easy way to make a palette. Yes, yes, exactly. So now you can have a template. I didn't. I didn't make one, so I'm just going to use my ruler here. Okay. 
and we're gonna start doing wet on wet. I'm sure you've seen chevron style wet on wet. Now another thing when you're doing wet on wet, it's the tool that you're using to drag the icing through. Now, for the fine feathering, I would recommend using a fine dip tool. Now, if you don't have anything, if you're just starting out, you can use a toothpick. But what happens with the toothpick, it's wood and it's very porous there. So at the tip of the toothpick, the icing accumulates. So you have to really like make sure to clean it off frequently if you don't want your icing, your let's say dark blue end up being in the yellow and so on. Or you can break the bank and just use another toothpick. <laughs> well, but you know, all the, not all the toothpicks are equally, you know, suitable for decorating. You know the the flat ones. Yes. You ever with those? Yeah, yes. I don't know if they have you tried using those for cake. Oh, you know what works well, and again, not that expensive, is to use those shish kebab skewers. Oh, okay. It's very pointy. Very pointy. Now the tools we are using, the scribe guys, this is a sharp uh, tool. This is like a small ice pick. What, what, is, is it called ice, ice pick? You, you want to hear a little story. When I went to Cookie Con, one of the last times I went to Cookie Con, there was in the vendor halls, uh, several vendors selling those needle tools. And a lot of the ladies bought them, you know, the pretty ones with pearls. Well, at the airport, the workers confiscated them all. Oh, they, they are pricey. Yeah. They are decorated with beads. They are a bit pricey. Yeah, so they took them because they saw them as, we as weapons. And, okay, I can understand in the carry-on, but they actually even confiscated stuff in the, in the bot, like, you know, on, in the under there. Yes, under, yes. I know what you mean. In in the um, okay, guys, help us out here. What are we? Baggage area. <laughs> yes, I see what you mean. It's like uh, they were they were thinking that people are like double seven and they're gonna somehow yeah. get into the exactly. What is it called? The area the whole, that it holds the okay, baggage I'm holding. Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going pretty sure, okay. though, pretty it's sure that nobody was able to go get their scribe mid flight to go and you know. So I'm going, I'm using pretty much the same consistent. Oh no, this is the wrong consistency, I think. Yes, it is. Oh no, is it? I'm confused now. No, I, I think it's okay. Thinking. It's sinking, so it's okay. So when doing the feathering, you want the consistency to be same or very close to the base that you are doing. You want it to sink into the icing. You don't want it to be too thick because then you won't be able to drag the tool through it and you won't get the feathering detail. Cargo, it's called. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I could have. I, <laughs> I can Sorry. imagine, though, all the, the people watching have already answered the, we're late to the, to the uh, you know. But I could have, I had to, like, yes. Okay, so now I'm using my scribe here. Oh, it's already starting to crust, I think, a little too slow. So if you start this, don't, if the doorbell rings, whoever's out there is going to have to wait. <laughs> yes, I think, I think that's for the, yes. Absolutely. You don't answer the phone. You, you don't need it to be fluid enough so the lines heal and you don't see the dragging through the icing. Once the icing starts crusting and you see the dragging, you see like at the end here, it was dragging, but I'm going to just give it a little tap and it's going to heal. Now you could obviously mix up the colors. I put three lines in the middle. You could do, you know, alternate the colors. That's perfectly fine. Cargo. I couldn't remember. So we can, you can let this crust and then come back and well, I'll say I will do that. I will let it crust. Now the second design, I'm going to utilize the smaller cutter that I have from the set. And I'm just going to eyeball where the center is. It's really hard from here. I can't really look down that much. Okay. So are you making piñata egg cookies? Is that what you're doing? 
Yes, I will. I will. I will. They are, they are in a, it's, I'm in the process. Now, this second design, you're also going to need a little bit of um, water. So I'm just spraying some water on paper towel here so I can dampen my brush. And I'm going to use... Well, then that's the sugar cookie that's in your on your blog and on the main page. What recipe is that cookie? The recipe, yes. This is the recipe for the cutout cookies. Yes, it's the, the, the most popular for the cutout cookies um, that is on the blog or the page there. And now, the real icing is there too. Yes. Now, you can use, this is a Borderlands Bakery brush set, and it's basically, um, I would say, now this, ice, this uh, brush has icing on it, so you can really see, but it's a similar style. So if you can get your hands on this kind of brush, this is from Art Store. Um, it's filbert and it's quarter inch. Filbert, I think it was marked as filbert four. So I have a bunch of these. These are really handy, very uh, universal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do brushed embroidery, but it looks slightly different. If you are starting out, it may be difficult for you to grasp the, the piping of the um scallop that so we're going to do dots instead okay and for this your icing you can see it's holding its shape and you want your brush to be slightly damp you don't want it to be dry but you don't want it to be soaking wet so that's why i have my uh, Okay. Now, another way to do this is to pipe the scalloped edge. Like I said, if you are struggling with that, you can do the dots instead and try using that. I like the dots. It gives you enough icing to completely fill, like, because you have to pull all the way across that yellow line. So you need a certain amount of icing. Yes. Tell me a story. Do you have a story to tell? Do I have a story to tell? A good one. I want some good stories today. Um, well, tentatively, my kids are going to be going to school next week. And are the lockdown, lockdown is supposed to end on February 1st here. So Is it? That will be awesome. How is it in your neck of the woods, guys? Are you still... If there is, um, if you have accumulated icing on your brush on the bristles, just wipe it off into the damp paper towel. So if you're new to cookie decorating, each technique, you know, you want to consider the time it takes depending on how many cookies you need to make so if you need to make a lot a lot of cookies this as you can see takes a long time so it might not be the the, the project but if you're doing it for fun and you want an enjoyable evening of decorating this is absolutely the project because then it's like a lot of little details and it's fun and you know you get to really it's like a little art project yes I think that's one of the mistakes maybe some beginners make is like really ambitious projects when they have a large um, amount needed, you know, and then you just, it becomes so overwhelming and it's not a fun experience anymore, right? Well, if you do it, I don't know if the dots are faster than, uh, um, than if I was to pipe the scalloped edge. I'm only doing like four dots at a time. If you are fairly quick, you could pipe, you know, faster and just get it done faster. I'm just doing, taking my time, doing it slowly. And then center, you can, I'm just going to ice it. We're going to flood it and do some wet on wet flowers. 
which has only polka dots. So hopefully it won't take you that too long. And you can see my icing is not super fluid, but you can see here it's starting to somewhat, it's not stiff, you know what I mean? It's not stiff stiff. It's like um, piping consistency around there. When you were a kid, Han, did you guys decorate like actual eggs? Mm -hmm. yes. I loved it. I loved it. Actual eggs. Um, anyone on the call here who has tried to empty the eggshell? Have you? When I was a kid, we did it a, a couple of times and my mother used a uh, medical syringe to empty the eggs. And so the oh, suction on she, she sucked it out. Oh, that's smart. That Thanks. is so smart. Oh, they have them here in a, in a store. I'm going to get some. <laughs> I have to try it. Really? I have never thought of it. We, I mean, obviously, we didn't. So my, my grandma, they would, uh, you make a little, you know, yes. you, you're like, you're like a little um, uh, tiny hole. Like an archaeologist. You're trying not yeah. to disturb anything, <laughs> you know? It's a tiny little hole on both sides and then you you blow in it i mean you gotta have some strong lungs to do that it actually hurts it actually oh, hurts yes to say. well that's what my mother was like i she i think she did it that way one time and said no 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 there's got to be a better way and then she thought about it a bit and she got so i'm going to i'm just removing some residue yeah i can see my line my outline my yellow outline underneath there so i'm just removing that so that's interesting. You used a, a light yellow outline, and you can see it through that dark blue. Yes. Well, if you can, if you cannot see, you can just take your cutter and kind of mark it that way. Yeah, you can mark it that way. Also, that also helps. I'm gonna try it because in the states, I don't think you can get a syringe. Like it's um, for obvious reasons. Um, like not, you know what I mean? Not in the store anyway. Oh, here you can get it at the pharmacy. They sell them empty, uh, different sizes. I don't think you could get it in the States. I don't remember. I don't remember. But here um, I saw some. So I'm going to try that because we did. I love decorating it. I really did. We would decorate the eggs like with all kinds of with yarn and we would give it to our. I mean, I told you about our weird, weird, weird tradition, right? Did I? I did tell you. Which if anyone is watching is from Slovakia, please, you know, I don't know if you are still following the tradition. I I, I love the meeting part, but not the beating part. <clears throat> Basically, women get kind of beaten, <laughs> but in a, in a way that it's meant to be like you stay young and, you know, energized or whatever, it's, you know, but the, some men would take it further and it's like you would have bruises, you know, or they would pour like this... Uh, this old-fashioned uh, perfume, which was like, it, it would stink. And another thing they would do, they would um, basically shower you in the water, like they would water you. There was like the guys would come and to bucket, hey, and then oh, that's gosh. The 50 times to, to, to keep you fresh and young, you know? Yeah. I, and think, I don't think the tradition is going strong in the cities, but um, in rural I areas, I think, I mean, it has its beauty when it's done right. But when it's being abused, then it's like it takes all the fun out of it. When it's done, you know, right, it's, it's a, a really nice tradition. <laughs> you're not you're not buying it? <laughs> I don't know how I'd react if somebody hit me and then threw me a bucket of water. They might lose I mean, it. It's, like, it's supposed to be like this gentle beat. Be, be, I'm calling it wrong. It's not really a beat, like beating. But like I said, but I remember when I was little and we would have like, you know, boys come or whatever and, and they... They got like right. It was getting rough. Like you have to run. <laughs> oh my! Because <laughs> it, it it hurt. It actually did hurt. I have to say. All right. So now I'm going to um, we're going to outline and flood the center. I'm gonna follow my yellow outline and then we'll pipe some cute little flowers using polka dot polka dot. Um, is this the right icing? I feel like it's too. Oh no, this one, yes. 
Okay. See, that's why I like to use my um, tape sealer, but I didn't use it. Oh, so yes, yes. So you can do your different colors. Very hard sometimes to figure out which one is which, which consistency. So I just have to like press it, and I know this one is more fluid. That's, so that's the one I want to use mm -hmm. for this. I guess if you don't have the tape, you could cut one after you've knotted it and leave the other one not cut. Yes, that is true. So these um, tipless bags are in your Amazon store. Should they want to order them? Yes, tipless. Well, now especially you should order some extra, extra bags because with what's happening, we don't know if the plastic. Uh, the issues. Yes. Well, here's also a little suggestion. Maybe get a set of the washable piping bags because, um, you know, in a pinch, obviously that would be good. Like if you don't have any more plastic ones, if you have some washable ones on hand, you can still crank out your orders. Sometimes I even wash these, I have to say. I mean, it's strange as it is. If they are well, I do wash the thicker ones, the Wilton ones. I find these because the Wilton ones, I'm using a coupler, so it's easier to kind of run water through them. But this, the hole is so small that I find them difficult to wash. I actually stand them in a in a jar. I have them in like I will leave them in a, in water overnight, and then I um, I just rinse them. You rinse them. I saw somebody wrote in one of our posts or something that she turns them inside out to clean them. Oh, so you see now I'm piping five dots. I started in the middle or where I figured middle is. I'm going to stagger them. It's so delicate. Yes. Oh, everything is so dainty. I don't know why I made the opening so small, but it is very small. Well, I like it. I mean, it look it's it's not a big cookie. So if you want to have a pattern like that, you need them to be small, or else they're just gonna just gonna be this one big thing. Now another thing, when you're doing wet on wet, oops, this um, remember the icing is sinking in, so it's actually expanding. So if you make the hole too big, it's going to sink. It's, it's going to spread. It's going to be, to be two to three times bigger. Yes. So it's always better to make the opening smaller and then you can make it bigger. Once you make it bigger, there's no way going back, as we all know. Now I'm going to use some white. I'm going to use white um, to make the centers. You could also use, should I use white or I think we'll use white. You could also use, no. Oh. I promise I'm not colorblind, not yet. Have you ever seen the videos of people putting on those corrective glasses for the first time? People that are colorblind? Yes, but it, it only works for certain, um, le I think, certain level of colorblindness. I recently have met a man who, is co who was colorblind. But men usually are, it's the red, is it, was it, the, is it the green and red? It's the most common. So he really couldn't tell, like he couldn't really tell, but then I was, I thought all the, all the glasses that, they, that you could get it would correct it, but not, I don't think all of them work equally. I guess it depends on the level of your. Um, well, all I, I was going to say is that every video I saw, the person is brought to tears. Yes. They're so overwhelmed by the, the, uh, the color. Yes. He couldn't, this man, this particular man, he could drive. Which like you, you are concerned, like I guess he said that every question he gets, uh, how can you tell a red and green light, you know? Um, but that wasn't a problem because of the, the positioning, I guess. They're all, oh, they're okay. always, you know, always the same position, but uh, um, he couldn't get the navigation license because of it. Navigate to be a, a pilot, you mean? No, not, not navigation. Um, um, not the pilot. Well, the pilot, obviously, no, but the... The truck driver? No, no, no. A water, a boat? Yes, the boat, the, the, not the pilot. Uh, a truck driver? 
the, no, no, no. The guy who operates the boat is a uh, what? Uh, a captain. The captain. <laughs> but I mean, how many people <laughs> want to drive a boat? From here? What? I said, how many people want to drive a boat? It's not like it's a big deal. Well, they they for for them it was because they did own a boat. Oh. <laughs> they had to. They ended up selling it. Never mind. It's not important. But I just yeah. Why, why did we start talking about oh, the Taliban? It's because I picked up blue and was talking about the white. <laughs> so now this is um, it's still shiny, but I can see it's somewhat crusted. If you're not not sure if it's crusted, okay, this is what you can do. In an area where nobody's going to see, you know, or you, you don't care, you can use your scribe and just give it a little poke. And if the hole, if you can see there's a little hole thing in there, it's not healing, so it's crusted. But it only means it's crusted on the top. It's not dry it's not under here. So don't put your hand on it or don't try to write on it, okay? Because you will, um, it will break. The surface will break. The drying process can take anywhere from five to seven to 12 hours, depending on the size of the cookie and also depending on where you, your climate. We talked about this, I think in the last slide also, drying cookies and how to um, speed up the drying. You use a dehydrator, right? I um, will just do a quick, you know, five minute mm -hmm. and then I'll take it out them to dry on a cookie it's just to kind of like seal the top yeah to get it going well it helps for the dipping you know sometimes the the icing will dip in the middle helps a bit for oh. that oh the dipping in the, the dipping in the middle it's caused by um insufficient uh, air circulation right well uh, i thought the dipping was more caused by the fact that the icing was no longer because you know, like it was not structurally able to, like the too, there was too much air that was kind of uh, removed from adding excessive amounts of water. Like the air is what holds the icing up. So if there's too much water, the air just can't, right? Like it's it's the dance between keeping enough air in the icing and adding just enough water so that it'll heal, but that the air is still there keeping the volume of the icing. Your icing is very, very runny. It heals very well, but it basically dries like, like a varnish, just coats. Yes. You don't get any more kind of like puffiness on your cookie. Now, if you want, um, you could add another little design here with five little dots. And you could also control how big your dots are. So you can see I'm alternating a tiny dot with a large dot. And this is all wet, all wet. Okay, so you, I'm not using any. Um, Thick icing, this is just one consistency. So when you're making your icing, do you make the white flood and then portion it out? Or do you uh, adjust the consistency for color? Or what do you do? Well, I have to say, I used to do... I used to do it color by color, but now I, uh, if I know I'm gonna use um, one consistency for more colors, I thin the white and then I portion it out into small balls and then I color it. But what happens with certain color, see certain gel colors, adding the gel color thickens it up. So you have to then again check the consistency. I, I had that happen with like orange. If the if the gel is pretty thick. It will usually there's or maybe there are some additives that cause cause it to thicken up. So it will thicken up a little bit, and then I check the consistency again, and I thin it if I need to with a little more water. The consistency. Now the last design, it's probably my favorite because it involves um, like this fluid-looking flower, and you'll see what I mean in a second. Now these all could be done on a smaller scale. You could do the I mean, you can really play with different. Uh, 
designs, adding your flowers, adding your tall polka dots just on a section if you wanted to, or adding the polka dots everywhere. So I'm going to uh, flat this whole thing. I'm leaving the edge here. Um, we could add a decorative border later if you wanted to. I just wanted to mention, I, I've been looking at the algorithm and there's a lot of international uh, viewers. So if you don't celebrate Easter, everything she's doing right now can be done on any shape. You can do this on a round, a square, a hexagon. You can Art, you know, any, any shape, yes, absolutely. These are all just fun kind of like designs to um, have on. You can make a t-shirt with the design, anything. Now I'm using a larger scribe here. I want to move the icing quickly because I don't want it to crust. So if you are new to new to cookie decorating and you're experiencing crusting before you get to do your wet on wet or before you get to finish because you were too slow, sorry, but in the beginning we are all a little too slow. That's normal. Um, so I would recommend you use a thicker scribe or even a palette knife to move the icing to cover the surface and then you can you can um, start with the next step, okay? Yeah, you uh, work quick, quick, quick. And don't forget to breathe. It's very important. Oops. It, are you making a minion? No, I'm not. You know what I'm making. <laughs> Why is it not looking yellow? It looks like this uh, ugly color. No, no it's not that. Does it always yellow. does it look like yellow for me? Yeah. It, for some reason, it, it never really looks like. Well, it yellow. looks like a yellow bullseye. <laughs> so now with the scribe, we're going to help this little thing to look a little bit more beautiful. You can see I'm just going back and forth all the way to the middle and there. And this can be done with any number of colors. What you can do also, you can add some dots here. Let's do that. Let's, let's, let's add, because we, we need more dots, obviously. So I'm going to add some dots here. As you get better, you can control the size of the dots. You know? And then you can let this dry. And you can add more dots if you want, or maybe some um, swirly lines, or you can just add a border. Okay? So that's, um, that's pretty much it. Beautiful, man. So these are just some simple, very simple... So if you wanna, if you're new, you can check out our Amazon stores if you need supplies, or you can check out Global Belly. Here's the, and there you can get yeah. decorating kits, everything in one box. Yes, yeah, so I'm having Global Belly. I have a starter kit uh, for the. It's a supply kit. And it's not. Uh, it doesn't. I don't think it. It has uh, all the tools you need to get started. Like uh, for example, this tool is really handy. You know, this is a tool I use. And also your scribe and um, brushes are also, this is a brush, if you didn't catch that, this is a um, like a Filbert style brush, uh, number four, quarter inch, good for um, brushed embroidery. But mm -hmm. if, if you're really a, the beginner, the project boxes are great too, because you get like kind of more. Oh yes, that's true, yes, that's true, yes. We have a lot of projects, you have, you have so many there also. I have a right. couple of Easter, but it's, um, it's, uh, I think you have a, a few more in Easter. And more I do have Easter. Easter. I also have, I mean, Valentine's Day is done, but this would be cute for also just because this yeah. is one kit for, this is designed to be for Valentine's Day because of the heart shape, mm -hmm. but you could make this for any, any time, I think. And it yes. comes with all the, all the tip -less bags. Um, the instructions, there are also uh, some transfer sheets that you can use to make little pepperoni and peppers and things like that. Mm -hmm. I also have another one, this is also very 
simple to do, but it's also a heart shape, you know, so it's more for Valentine's Day. Awesome, Han. So guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. We hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, just pop them in the comments and um, we'll see you in the next live. Thank you guys. Where's, where's, where's the, where it is? There it is. Okay, bye. Bye.